there you go. All right. Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Almost 4th of July Friday, you know. Uh, Independence Day here in the United States, so we're all in celebration mode. I hope I didn't catch, uh, I hope uh, I've caught some of you sitting down today. Hopefully maybe some of you have gotten off. You got a little time to yourselves and have time to watch a little Hemp Fact Friday. Maybe the, I know that it can be a busy day for us. You know, some people are traveling, some people have, you know, kids are naturally off. So, you know, some people have their ch children and sitting down and watching something for 30 minutes isn't always a possibility. So we do appreciate those of you who have decided to join us today. We're able to join us today. So thank you very much. Uh, today's topic, hey Carl, how you doing? Today's topic is hemp versus cotton. Hemp versus cotton. We don't really have too many competition shows. It'll probably be like the first and the closest one we ever get to like a competition show. But um, I thought it was an interesting topic because these two fabrics, uh, these two these two botanicals uh, turned into uh, a fabrics worldwide. They've been used in a multitude of ways, and it seems like, you know, historically, cotton has gotten the better end. You know, some of that has to do with uh, legislation and a couple other factors, but let's talk about today. We're going to talk about today, like, what, where we are with this right now. Hemp seems to be having a little revival, uh, hopefully a big revival. Uh, we're hoping that anyway. <laughs> And we're going to see if maybe we can, you know, maybe change some minds or at least offer a little perspective on the benefits of hemp, both as uh, a fiber and also um, what it does. You know, we've talked a little bit the last couple of weeks about its ecological impact. We're going to talk a bit about that. Uh, we'll give a little background, as always, on uh, kind of like hemp farming, you know, a little bit of the soil tradition and stuff like that. Uh, the switch to cotton, how that happened, um, not going to too much depth into that, but how, at least in America, uh, we're going to talk about the sort of the, not necessarily the pros and cons, but hemp versus cotton and then the ways that I, we just talked about, we're going to kind of break that down. Um, we're going to give the winners by category. Well, that's okay. I got it. Yeah, let's see that. Yeah, and um, we'll talk a little about the future of hemp products, hemp uh, and cotton and things like that. And then we're going to close it out. So let's get started. Hope um, we got your interest. And let's talk about so like the last couple episodes. Excuse me. We're going to, all right. right. No one has to touch our face, but you know, nose is itching there. But the last couple episodes were kind of like on farming, hemp and farming, and on uh, the soil. And this isn't necessarily a part three because part two was sort of like, or excuse me, the soil was sort of a part two to hemp and farming. But there is kind of a connection, as you know, and both of these are, you know, botanicals. They're planted in the ground, they're cultivated throughout the world. Um, hemp and cotton have been the two most planted, I think, and, and cultivated crops in the history of the United States, or probably in the history of the world. Uh, both go back thousands of years across continents for a multitude of uses, uh, beyond, way beyond just fabrics. So today, cotton is grown in over 70 countries worldwide. It's a lot of countries, uh, and meanwhile, the benefits of hemp fiber production uh, uh, particularly uh, is known, but hemp production due to like legal legislative issues and kind of a lack of infrastructure that cotton has. It's sort of lag behind cotton in worldwide production. So even though hemp can be grown almost anywhere in almost, uh, uh, almost a variety of conditions with little to, to no human assistance, um, cotton is, and cotton is kind of the regions are sort of restricted to where cotton can grow. Um, one second, do you mind running back and grab something in the printer? I forgot. So I'm gonna show these guys something. So we're uh, at least here in the United States, we kind of show you that uh, cotton is really kind of limited to arid, dry regions, and arid, dry regions tend to need water. So I'm gonna give you a little map to kind of show you. Uh, we print it off the internet, kind of show you where some of these regions are, but most of them are in the south and in the west. So, um, you know, we've always known about, you know, through our history or if you've seen any historical, you know, movies about the South or its history, uh, you know, we're not to bring up, you know, political stuff, but you can see here, you know, this is, here. okay, this is like, oh, the story of cotton. This is like cotton.com, as you know, I'm already giving away one of our sources today. So, you can see California down into the southwestern states, you know, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, on through the deep south, Florida. Uh, I think Florida may be, it might be the first place cotton was planted. That's one of our little footnotes here. We'll get to that in just a second. 
So, I'll give you a little background. Again, hemp and cotton have been staple crops uh, worldwide, uh, at least here initially, back in like his background, like background me a little history, were uh, needed for things like on ships, like ropes, sails, uh, clothing, sacks, and things like that, canvases. Uh, hemp was so vital to the colonies early on that the citizens were required to grow hemp. Uh, it was seen as the patriotic thing to do, to have hemp growing. Um, and again, I know we've said this many times, you can pay your taxes with hemp at that point. Hemp has been cultivated for close to 8,000 years across continents and cultures. Uh, traveling the world by horse, camel, mule, but mostly by boat. Uh, came here with the Europeans uh, and traveled across the sea. Even like archaeological digs as far as Asia, Europe, Africa, India, Middle East have all found evidence of hemp uh, and cotton for that matter uh, dating back years. And hemp claimed to have anywhere between, I don't know, 10,000 to 50,000 uses. I know that's a big difference, but you know, you see all kinds of stuff. So you just try to take it, we'll, we'll call it 20 something thousand uses. How's that? And the quarterfication process of peeling out that hard outer shell um, helped usage and expansion uh, at least for a time but as we all know uh, things change. Uh, cotton, scientists believe that cotton has been cultivated for at least 7,000 years. Uh, at least there, there have been uh, digs in Mexico that they found cotton uses fabric that were like 7,000 years old. Cotton has been found in archaeological sites they say in Mexico, Pakistan, Arab regions, Africa, Europe, uh, Asia and first believed to have been planted on U.S. soil in Florida in 1556, uh, in Virginia 1607, and I think they say the British were the first to spin cotton by machine, but it was Eli Whitney who invented the cotton gin, and we all remember that from school. Um, I don't know if they still teach this stuff in school. I don't heck know what they teach in school these days, but um, he changed the way things were done. I think this is a, a very much labor-intensive process labor intensive in the field, but also labor intensive to get it from this this seedy little ball of, of stuff to something that was like usable in fabric. That was the hard part. So around 1770, 1793, Eli Whitney got a patent for the cotton gin and the cotton gin made it possible to spend large amounts of cotton for uh, burgeoning uh, textile and industrial revolution. Uh, the U.S. in 10 years went from a uh, cotton industry went from 150,000 to 8 million. That's quite a bit of growth. So uh, it's actually pretty astonishing. You can understand probably why people were choosing cotton to be king because it was profitable. Uh, cotton is still king to this day and it's still the leading cash crop in the U.S. and probably in the world. Uh, at least one of them in the world. Um, more cotton is grown than any other fiber in the world and annual revenue generated by cotton industry totals at over 120 billion dollars in the u.s alone 120 billion dollars what's up ray nah, that's my dad so oh my brother that's not my brother i guarantee that's not happening <laughs> <laughs> so uh they say so um cotton is an inseparable really kind of part of american life like, i would just i don't know just think about the things that we use every day from cotton um to towels so probably the most common things and washcloths to our socks to a t-shirt everybody has their favorite t-shirt um and we all know how soft that feels to us like it feels just comforting you know uh, everything from low fashion to high fashion, jeans, etc. You know, you can pay $800 for a piece of cotton, tell you the truth. <laughs> that is a God, that is true today. Um, so there are hundreds of uses. So let's talk, talk about a little about cotton um, as a fiber, and, like the pieces that break down the cotton plant. So the fiber or lint, as they call it, that's where that term comes from. You get stuff in your pocket, the little balls, they call it lint, comes from the initial, one of the original names for fiber or that part of the cotton plant. Uh, was used for cloth. Let's use about that. Uh, the linters, the short fuzz on the seed, was used for plastics um, and things like as the linters produce cellulose. I think that may be a more organic cotton, but I gotta kind of check on that. Uh, cotton seed oil, definitely used for more organic uses were made for food. So if you want to make cotton seed oil, they would have need more organic cotton, not more like industrial cotton, if there is such a term. 
but oil for cooking, salad, salad oils, meals for livestock, poultry, and fish feed. Also use it for fertilizer, and they use the holes for some of the same things. So on the surface, these crops are very similar and have very similar type of uses. So for the sake of argument today, for the sake of argument, uh, we're going to break down like how they differ and the similarities between the two. And in the end, we will crown a champion today, cotton versus hemp. And just because we crown a champion, we want you to kind of come in and like dial in a little bit later. You get a chance to watch this a little bit later on, or if you're watching it now, comment. You know, maybe you don't agree with what we come up with. Maybe you don't agree with our conclusions, and that's awesome. But it's a show the world. Like, what do you think? You know, could you give up cotton for the sake of hemp, or at least share a space in your dresser? you know, for uh, some hemp-based products. So, as you know, like, these things have been kind of coming back since, kind of like, the 90s. So, either way. Um, so, we want to know, like, what you think we should be using or use growing more of. And if we're going to go um, to, like I said, we talked about the categories, the fiber uh, and uses as a, and versatility as a fiber or fabric. And, thank you, Kathleen and their ecological impact. So those are the two main categories. We're gonna break those up into a few subcategories. So some say it's past time that we switch to hemp and some say cotton is king and should still be king. So why switch? So who will be the winner? Let's break it down, all right? So let's talk about cotton and hemp as a fiber. Uh, and we're gonna, our six categories today are gonna to be durability, comfort, uh, how they hold colors, breathability, cost and there are different uses all right uh, so durability although cotton is somewhat durable fabric hemp is less likely to wear thin over time and some say it will never wear thin um, so it, what we all known for uh, cotton can be very durable as jeans as you know are one of the most like what I guess the things that we wear every day that we appear to be as durable you know nothing feels as good as that pair of jeans and it does soften over time and sometimes thank goodness for that you know uh you know how it feels when you pull that pair of jeans out the dryer seems so a little bit snug like that you gain a little bit of weight you wait 10 minutes <laughs> jeans feel just right <laughs> thank goodness for that cotton <laughs> but they are durable you know so um you know you remember like running around as a kid and you fall and you got you know shorts on it's a whole different story if you got the jeans on to keep you protected from the scars so the streets to scar your knees up and things like that so cotton is a very durable thing however however uh hemp is less likely to wear thin hey mom mom is watching god love mom thank you she up your mom does support you who the heck will my goodness right so uh hemp is a very is known to be a very durable product uh very durable fabric actually um and it will kind of wear thin over time, but uh, it's something that they were using primarily to make rope, and there had to be good reason for that. Comfort. Cotton, as we know, has been prized for its softness. Uh, and like we talked about that new t-shirt or some new socks. I don't know how that feels, put on that fresh cotton, and some may get washed and never feel the same again, somehow. But hemp apparently may start off i haven't been wearing too many hemp clothing i mean maybe i need to get some hemp clothing you anybody out there and you got hemp clothing you got a hemp clothing line reach out to us we'll probably we'll, we'll send you a couple of dollars and get some hemp clothing so we can have a little more personal perspective on this but um uh, hemp is they start off a little stiff and known to be a little stiff but softens over time um without losing much of its integrity as a fabric now Again, back to cotton, is it is soft and it does kind of get softer and wears over time, which some which at a certain point is comfortable. But at a certain point, like we've all had that t-shirt, or God forbid, a pair of undergarments that have worn a little bit too thin in spots. And it's just it's just what it is. You know? So <laughs> I think that's funny, but we this is always something this is real. We've all had this, you know. It's nobody. Well, maybe not everybody wears undergarments, but um, holds colors. Cotton, tin, cotton, colors on cotton tend to fade and wear thin, uh, although it is kind of uh, absorbing, but the natural absorbent qualities of hemp helps it hold color much longer and they tend to fade uh, a little bit less. Uh, we really got to get some hemp clothing if I check this out. You know? um, breathability. Now, 
We all know, like he says, softness, breathability, the reason you wear a cotton t-shirt, say under a dress shirt, for example, for those guys, uh, girls wear dress shirts, is so, you know, sometimes, at least when I wear a dress shirt, usually I'm going to a, a situation that's a little more stressful than what I'm dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, <laughs> so I need to have that little layer of cotton up on it that starts you know, soaking up any sort of sweat. Um, could be a wedding, could be hot, you know, maybe you want that little extra layer so you're not, you know, not as attractive when you're, you have a nice wet, you know, sweaty wet <laughs> dress shirt. Takes away from the whole thing. Um, but little did we know, little did we know. And like, oh, and cotton is naturally moisture wicking. What is moisture wicking? Wicking is pulls moisture away from the skin. Makes sense, because exactly what we are just talking about. Somehow, ironically, hemp is four times more absorbent than cotton and better at wicking moisture from the skin. All right. Um, I do got a couple like, I know, it's crazy, right? I don't know, you know who would have known this stuff? You know, because we didn't grow up wearing hemp clothing, you know what I mean? Um, you yeah, know, maybe like our great, 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 great grandparents. <laughs> hemp clothing. I bet it's in the room. But if you think about like sailors, their clothing made out of hemp, like, like you know, the colonial period. Moisture wicking. You think about it's made of rope, you know, like hemp rope, you know, and all these things the sails are getting wet. Like in moisture wicking, you know, so there's a reason why they chose hemp, you know, for, you know, on ship. Uh, and apparently very resistant. Let's talk about, let's go back to durability for a hot second and talk about resistance. Um, again, as a fiber, sturdy enough to that Ford actually made cars, at least prototype cars out of hemp. Uh, fabrics are used, uh, hemp fabric was used for covered wagons you know, as they traveled cross country in the 1800s. You always see like the old Wells Fargo thing, you know? Probably hemp, you know what I mean? We should call Wells Fargo and ask them. They probably don't know, you know? But Levi's were once made from hemp. Interesting. Yeah. I know, that makes sense. And um, canvas, canvas may have, the word canvas may have been uh, derived from the word cannabis. Cannabis, uh, canvas being very similar in texture in that to him. So you can see how the words do change over time. Uh, and there could be a possible relation. That's a possibility, you know, not necessarily a fact. So him possibilities could be our next series. <laughs> so cost, cost, cost. This, uh, this is, uh, what's it, uh, section five. Cost being, um, being, Cotton being more uh, widely grown, widely utilized, and, and had been for hundreds of years, has uh, a hundred years worth of infrastructure. And when they say infrastructure, that's a, it was a lot of areas, you know? So not just manufacturing, ginning, and things like that, spinning and stuff, but also um, banking and financial infrastructure. All these things are in place uh, legislatively to make sure that the cotton industry keeps on humming along. Now hemp, which has been, has been illegal for here and for most places in the world for the last hundred years, is making a comeback and is still considered like a niche product, you know? Um, I, I, yeah, niche product, you know? So therefore hemp, even fiber is considered way more expensive at this point than cotton. So um, let's see, hopefully 10 years from now, that may be a whole different thing. You never know. This, this, this market keeps going the direction it's going and more countries to start producing hemp fiber and loosening love legislation, uh, this could have a whole, whole different, it could be a whole different conversation in 2030. Uh, at least it's bring on 2021, 2020, we're just trying to <laughs> So different uses, different uses. So cotton uh, has been used for textiles, fabrics, uh, shoes, curtains, band-aids, fishing uh, nets, coffee filters. There's things that we use every day. Uh, shoes, shoestrings, uh, handkerchiefs, uh, organic cotton, as we talked about, can be used for food products for both animals and people. Um, seed, there be, um, food oils and things like that, salad oils and such. And uh, cotton seed, or what, well, excuse me, cotton seed was used, excuse me, in hulls are used for livestock and feed. The organic cotton is used for more food and seed for food and food oils for people. Cotton, um, the uh, cotton seed is used for more livestock, feed, things like that. They could use it for pharmaceuticals, margarine, butter, and even plastics, which I did not know. This is very good stuff. Hemp, on the other hand, has an array of different uses itself. 
uh, some of the same as cotton for textiles, but also for paper, uh, food products, oils, um, you know, topicals, as well as ingestible oils, uh, vapable oils, as you know, we talked about, pharma, uh, pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals, I cannot say that, I'm sorry, <laughs> rope, biofuels, hempcrete, and insulation, uh, and, and hemp is actually making, they're making fantastic building materials out of hemp. And people who don't know this, I think we should probably talk a little bit about this in a couple weeks, we will touch on this, but not necessarily this particular subject, but these hemp uh, building materials are like lightweight, they're waterproof, they're fireproof, they're like pest and mold resistant, um, self-insulating, I mean, it's quite crazy. Like, I, it's crazy that this is even happening, or this is even possible, and like, you would think a lot of these, in places where a lot of these issues are a problem, like this would be this would be a savior for some cultures, um, but also like going back to the original bags, sacks, sails, carpets, even plastics, by um, plastics that could biodegrade within 90 days. That is something special. And in an era where we're talking about you know islands of plastic that that are just sitting around floating together in the sea, you know. Uh, you talk about some making plastics that you can throw back into the ground that will biodegrade. That helps us all. Um, vape juice. Uh, so we talked, uh, I think we might have mentioned that already. But either way, there's a heck of a lot of uses uh, for hemp and cotton. So now let's talk about this from more of an ecological standpoint. We'll get into a little pros and cons before we crown the winners here. And you know, again, like I said, you guys think you here, type in some, you know, type in your hemp or cotton when all this is over. We would love to see your comments. But uh, from an ecological standpoint, we're going to break this into uh, another six categories. So water use, land use, uh, impact on the soil, uh, the need for pesticides and weed killers, uh, yield per acre, and overall carbon footprint. So while hemp crops are mostly rain fed, um, heavily irrigated cotton is quite the thirsty plant. It really is. So they did a study, I think I can't remember the name of the, um, the, the institution of somewhere in, in Great Britain, uh, a water study on hemp versus cotton, okay? And what they turned determined is that it can take more or up to, what, two, 2,500 to 5,000 gallons of water to produce one kilogram of cotton. That is 2.2 pounds. That's it. That's enough for an outfit, a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. 5,000 gallons of water, you know? We live in America. I don't know where he was watching this from. I assume most people are watching this from the United States at this point. Um, but we're, we're pretty lucky in, in, in most places in the United States. California, you know, maybe not as much as some of the rest of us. We have plenty of water here. Um, in some other places, this could be quite offensive to hear that, you know, that the water is such a scarce resource and we're putting out 5,000 gallons you know, to create a, a, a kilo of, of cotton, is, it seems like a little intense, you know, but maybe that's just the way it's supposed to work. Let's see how the hemp has to say. Um, hemp is, by contrast, almost self-irrigating with its ultra-deep roots. It would take only about 1,400 gallons to produce one kilogram of dry hemp, 30% of which, 30% of that biomass can be used for fiber production. So that seems like almost a no-brainer. Um, as far as land use, hemp needs half as much land to produce a ton of hemp as cotton. Hemp plants are tall and thin and don't take as much room to grow. So they more grow up like this than out like this, you know. Soil benefits with its deep roots. Uh, hemp tends to somehow, lo it loosens the soil, which makes it easier for more delicate plants to be grown after that. We talked a little bit about last week about crop rotation, you know, planting hemp here as it kind of helps put benefits into the soil. But another benefit of that is that those deep roots kind of go down there and they can break up. So you can say plant lettuces or something like that after that. Um, but uh, also it's add nutrients to the soil, which are, you know, a lot of nutrients are stored in the leaves and stems when they fall down. It's a very leafy, bushy plant, a leafy, bushy plant that grows up and it falls down and it adds nutrients into the soil, almost composting itself back in there. Um, we talked a little bit about last week in hemp and soil that hemp can pull toxic chemicals from the soil. So in places where you have, you've maybe had chemical spills or you have toxins in your soil for whatever, maybe from 
local plants, things that may be in the water. So we can pull this and purify and, and like and most other plants cannot. There are a couple of other bioaccumulators out there as plants, but hemp is probably the most, one of the most effective. And we keep bringing up the Chernobyl example. We won't go into depth on that today, but look up hemp and Chernobyl cleanup and you'll find some pretty amazing things. Um, perfect, we talked about to utilize in crop rotation as we just mentioned. Uh, cotton, not the same benefits for the soil and there has been some argument that cotton production is degrading uh, the soil even though um, they take the leftovers and then put it back plant it back in but i don't think it has the same nutrient benefit as the hemp does plus as we talked about cotton tends to grow, grow in these uh, dry arid climates here and in other places in the world i think it's like china Uzbekistan, and a couple other places that this is growing and you know, it needs a lot of water. Places that didn't, it needs a ton of water. Dry area places need a lot of water. What are you going to say? So let's go into a few pros and cons. Pros and cons of hemp. You need 190, to, uh, the pros, and it needs 90 to 120 days to grow. Uh, totally biodegradable. Needs 2,300 and maybe gallons of water for a kilogram. So that, that was a little higher than what I just mentioned, but you never know. The facts are flying all over the place. We'll call between 1,400 and 25 whereas uh, uh, the cotton is probably more about 2,500 to 5,000. Um, great food source, contains fatty and amino acids, high in protein, uh, a range of uses, sustainable, durable material, eco-friendly, rich historical use, can be used for medical and industrial purposes. It can be grown on every content besides Antarctica. Pretty amazing. It can save trees from deforestation, needs very little or no chemical additives to grow. Uh, naturally resistant to pests and naturally is this resistant to weeds. There are some cons to hemp. Uh, it is not legal everywhere in the world and the industry is very small and in development. So that's it for the cons list. Uh, <laughs> pros and cons to cotton. Cotton is a natural plant. It is a very breathable material. Uh, various range of uses that we mentioned a little bit earlier. It's a soft, very soft material, luxuriously soft. Uh, is a flexible material. Uh, it is biodegradable and a huge industry making a lot of profit and it does not irritate the skin. Um, I don't know if we mentioned that. Uh, cotton is hydro hypoallergenic, which means that anyone can benefit, anyone can use cotton. Um, so there's no, I've never heard anyone say I'm allergic to my cotton t-shirt. There might be some people out there, but I don't know any. But, um, Cons, it isn't too environmentally friendly as we just heard. It is rather expensive for production. It needs uh, large lots of land to grow, uh, huge amounts of water for irrigation. Uh, it breeds with chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, etc. It needs a lot of time to grow. I'm not sure exactly how long, but we can look into that. Um, it does decay after uh, prolonged use and cotton production leaves a real impact on human health and exposure due to chemicals. Um, we're talking about the like, chemicals in the ground, chemicals in the water, uh, especially where, you know, people who are actually hired to, to work in the fields, you know, you know, these usually are wealthy people. So, and they probably don't stay in places where they have the best, you know, systems of water and things like that. So usually those people end up getting shorted. So either way, let's not go too much into that. We're gonna, we're gonna crown the winners here, all right, by category, first by fabric, uh, and the six categories are durability, hemp is the winner. Comfort, cotton is the winner, hands down. Breathability, hemp is the winner, apparently. Uh, as far as the functionality and different uses, hemp is the winner, even though there's a ton of uses in cotton. Uh, cost, cotton is the big winner right there. And holds colors, hemp is also the big winner. That's four out of six. From the ec ecological impact, water use, land use, soil benefits, carbon footprint, pesticide and need of pesticide and weed killers. Oh, did we even go to that? No, we did not. Oh shoot, I missed that whole section. So, I apologize about that. Let's, let's so we already got to know the, the, uh, the, the three winners for water use, land use, and uh, soil benefits. But I've missed something, I apologize. I'm, dead. I'm not on my game today. I might be in holiday mode on you. But the need um, for, need for pesticides and weed killers. Cotton uses 16 to 25% of the world's pesticides. That's a heck of a lot. 16 to 25% of the world's pesticides. All plants. Hemp, uh, by contrast, needs little to no pesticides or chemicals. George, what's up, George? You know, Fuji from Osaka, Japan. George knows exactly what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> we 
used to play this game in high school. Wow. You know? So, uh, no need, little to no need for pesticides and chemicals to grow and will grow heavily with little human interference. Hardly, excuse me. Uh, as far as yield per acre, hemp produces, wow, 200 to 250% more fiber than cotton per acre. I, you can't even argue with that. I mean, I don't know how cotton can make up 200 to 250%. Um, that's crazy. On, on the, that's on the same or similar size patch of land. That's pretty amazing, honestly. And as far as overall carbon footprint, um, we talked to some about some of this last week. One of the more amazing, amazing statistics is uh, we all heard the four times as many tr uh, paper as trees that hemp can produce. Uh, for every ton of hemp grown, 1.63 tons of carbon dioxide is removed from the Earth's atmosphere. I would say that again. For every ton of hemp grown, 1.63 tons of carbon dioxide is moved from the Earth's atmosphere. This could be a carbon footprint like relief method. It could be a saver for the planet if you think about it. Like everybody started planting it in their backyard. There's no telling how we can turn some of this stuff around. If you believe in science and you believe that we have, you know, uh, excess amounts of carbon in our atmosphere, not everybody believes that, but if you do, this could be a, uh, a definitely a help. Uh, it's a good cover crop, great for weed control without pesticides, as we talked about, pulls impurities from the soil, and adds dense, dense amounts of nutrients from the soil. So, second half, carbon footprint, hemp, pesticides and weed killers, hemp, and yields per acre, hemp. It's like... It's like a like a like a six game. Oh, cotton. Oh, cotton can't be grown in a 150 to 180 days. That was a little Larry fact right there. We said we get back to that. We got back faster than we thought. Boom. Right. So it's a six game sweep on environmental impact over here uh, with hemp. I, I um, this is, and this is nothing against cotton. We're going to talk about that in a second. But I think what's happening now, like the future of cotton and hemp, is that. Uh, hemp and cotton blends are kind of coming or, or, or being talked about from different companies. I know it's companies like Adidas are making shoes. I heard the Gap at some point. I don't know if the Gap is still around. Uh, they might have had some hard times during this whole thing. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to spread any rumors, but I heard that they were been using hemp and clothing since like the 90s. So kudos to the Gap for that. Uh, as industry grows and infrastructure grows, we should pave the way for cheaper hemp products and abundance more of hemp products. So infrastructure, again, like from farming to financial to banking to legislation to milling uh, the whole works so we're looking at some great and exciting things and we've talked about some of the other things that people are going to be making from hemp like biofuels plastics uh the hempcrete the hemp insulation um i mean a lot of exciting things are coming down the uh, down the pipe for him and i think you know, we just it's it's been a funny year or two uh 18 2020 is saying a lot of highs and lows i guess like most any other industries you know um, and there are a lot of industries right now seeing highs and lows, that's for sure. So uh, if they're going to make it, I think hemp can make it too. We're all going to make it through this thing together. And I, I personally think that inventions such as like the 3D printer, with all the things that hemp is possible, that are possible with hemp. Like, so you got the, the like entrepreneurs and inventors should be very excited about what they can do, especially if you got a 3D printer. Uh, 3D, 3D printers are apparently getting cheaper, so we can probably see all kinds of um, possibilities of products coming in the next 10 to 20 years out of them. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope that you learned something. I hope that uh, we brought a little bit of value today. Um, at least one person thought it was interesting. Thank you, Kathleen. So <laughs> we'd love to see your comments, whether, you know, give it some thought, go home, maybe even, you know, if you want to do a little research on yourself, but let us know. What do you think? Ham versus cotton, you know, put it in there. Um, also, let us know about the questions. Oh, uh, our, this series is going to be ending in a couple weeks. we got a couple more coming. So the 24th, 21 questions. you got questions about hemp. We're not going to talk about anything. We're going to be taking your questions. So we definitely want to gather your questions. you got anything you want? I mean, it's as silly or as, as, as complex as you could get. We will sit here during that period to try to answer those questions. Uh, we'll kind of keep it light. But the next week is uh, antifungal, antibacterial, what the heck does all this mean? Um, 717, we're talking about uh, people here in the mid-Atlantic, like mid-Atlantic hemp, who's doing what? You know, so like a who's who uh, of people in this industry who are doing things um, and just kind of give those some spotlight. Um, our sources today, uh, premiumjane.com. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Wama Underwear, hemp underwear. Crazy, right? That's a good company. Uh, Medium. 
Slate.com, Slate.com, Leafly, which has always been a good help, Cotton.org, as we mentioned, Indohemp.com, and the Green uh, Green Market Report. Dot com. Um, as we want to get some props before we close, as we do, this segment was not intended by any means to demonize cotton or the cotton industry. Uh, we all love cotton, as we talked about. We all have our favorite jeans, t-shirts, socks, whatever. Um, but we want to give props to all those workers in the chain of cotton producers from the front office to the fields, factory workers, gin mill workers, um, tailors and seamstresses. Yes. These, these, these professions still exist. There are still tailors and seamstresses out there. Um, anyone in the chain of cotton and fabric producers everywhere, thank you for everything that you do. And especially for keeping us clothed. You know, I don't think we want to go, I mean, I damn sure don't think anyone wants to see me walk around with no clothes on. And most of my stuff is cotton. So, <laughs> at this point. So, we're going to thank all you for what you do, especially you know, those people who are working out in the fields and small cotton farmers in the North Carolina, Virginia, down south. We may just have a little plot of land and you're just trying to get yourself you know, a couple pieces of bread on the table and producing your little stuff on the side. So uh, kudos to you guys. Uh, I know cotton has a very funny history here. Um, and we're, like I said, we're not here to demonize cotton in any means. Um, it's not something that we use, everyone in the world uses every day. So uh, thank you so much. As always, thanks for watching. Um, please follow us, like us, and uh, share with your friends and family. Um, so you find our, some of our YouTube um, the channel at uh, Cherry Blossom CBD on YouTube. We've got a couple other videos on there. We're going to keep adding to that. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and all our other social media outlets, Instagram, um, Twitter as well. Um, we may be adding some more. I don't know. We're not, you know, we're older guys. So we're not too, like, savvy with this stuff. But if it makes sense, we'll add it on. So um, have a great holiday weekend, everyone. Thank you to uh, everyone who's up, not just our customers, but everyone who's like believing in him, believing in this movement and taking part in it, whether you're just a customer, whether you're a producer, whether you're a farmer, what have you, but we want to thank you. Um, and thank you for everyone who take the time to watch these, these segments and hopefully we'll bring us an education and answer some questions. Uh, have a great holiday weekend. God bless America and we'll see you next week.